In this video, I'll be introducing you all to an amazing all-in-one device that you need for your smart farming or smart gardening based projects and that is the only device that you will need. So before starting with that device, let me first tell you like how that device was actually made. Here we go. Yeah, that's how that device was actually made and now in this video I'll let you know everything about this device like what are specification what kind of sensors comes built in this particular device uh, what is in its built-in firmware how it's built-in firmware actually works that I'll let you know and in the end I'll also let you know how to program this board using Arduino ID for fetching all the sensors data and printing them on the serial monitors so this is the only video that you need to watch for your all the smart uh, gardening based projects and without wasting time let us start with this video now talking about the specification of this board then this board is based on the ESP32 chip so we can expect the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity option along with the 4 MB of flash memory built in now what makes this board different from the other boards are the built-in sensors so this board has built-in capacitive soil moisture sensor an EC sensor or electrical conductivity sensor which can sense the amount of salts in the soil DHT11 sensor for measuring temperature and humidity BH1750 for light intensity monitoring and a dedicated I2C port for connecting external I2C based sensor now along with that there are a couple of more features which makes using this board more convenient which is it has a battery connector port along with the battery charging circuit on board it also has a type C connector for both powering up the board and charging the battery. And in case we need to add more sensors or relays or any input output devices, we do have a couple of GPIO pins exposed on the boards so that we can easily attach the input output devices. And last but not the least, this board also had a dedicated reset button on the board. So that was all about the hardware specification of the board. Now let's try to power up the board and let's see what we are getting in the built-in firmware. So now I'll let you know what comes in the built-in firmware of this TTGO Hygro. So right now I powered on this device and all the devices like when you get this new product, uh, it already uh, be having its built-in firmware. So you just need to power it up, it will start working, okay? So what it will do, it will be acting as a hotspot, okay, or access point which you can connect it on your smartphone. So I directly connect it to this TTGO board. So I'll go to my Wi-Fi section and uh, here probably a new network should appear. Let us wait for it. Okay, so here it is T Hygro. So I'll connect to it directly. It is an open network. It got successfully connected. Now I'll go to my web browser and type the IP address as 192.168.4.1. Now this will be the static IP address. So the IP address will be same for all the users. Okay, so when I open that uh, link, it should uh, show me one web page. Let us wait for couple of seconds okay so the page is loaded right now and as you can see we are able to see the data of different different sensors the first is the light sensor second is the soil moisture sensor third is the salt value salt percentage then the battery value then the BME sensor which is not at all connected so the value is zero zero then DHT temperature is 27 degrees Celsius then DHT humidity is 35 percentage okay so all the sensors data we are getting straight away in the built-in firmware so I'll insert the sensor in the pot and let's observe the uh, real life data the real life values of all these sensors so i'll dig it inside this soil uh, okay and let's see the values okay so right now the value is uh, like the light value is almost same because the light condition haven't changed but soil value changed to 50 percent so the moisture level of the soil is decent enough 50 percent is good salt value is also good enough which is 163 percent now in the later video like later in this video i'll let you know uh, how the salt number reveals that whether this plant needs some soil uh, sorry needs some salt or not so i'll let you know while we'll be programming this particular board okay then the battery voltage will be the same and the temperature humidity will be the same let us try to add some water and let's see what happens with the you know soil moisture values okay so i'll pour some water in the pot and as you can see the value increased to 63 percentage 62 percentage i added a little bit of water, uh, water to it uh, just to test everything is working or not okay so everything seems pretty fine like pretty working fine so whenever you get this sensor it's a standalone device it's ready to be used so you can plug it in 
and you'll be working flawlessly without you know programming any damn thing inside this board but still if you want to program we do have the option for that as well we can definitely program it using arduino id so now let me take you to my arduino id and let me show you how to program the board to get all the census data individually so that we can use it for our next projects so here's my Arduino ID screen and here is the demo code which I made to fetch the census data like all the census data individually and it will require a couple of library to be installed but before that you need to have the ESP32 boards package already installed onto your Arduino ID so make sure you do that step if you don't know how to do that I'll leave the link for that video down in the description so that you watch it out and install the ESP32 board after installing the boards you also need to install the DHT11 sensor library uh, the BH1750 the light sensor library then you need to download download yeah that's pretty much it uh, other sensor will be based on the i2c protocol so wire.h will be enough for that particular thing great pretty common after that we have defined the pins for all the uh, sensors and uh, yeah all the sensors and the buttons you can say the boot button and also the power control now the power control is a really important thing if you program the board program this particular uh, TT group board by just you know reading the census data it won't work with all the census yes i tried that out if you simply upload a code of reading census data it won't work it's just because of this power control pin yes the power control pin is kind of a architecture kind of a design that ttgo made it's a brilliant design for sure but if you don't know its design if you don't know this single pin you won't be able to use the census data you won't be able to fetch the sensor even the sensor won't get powered up okay so what you need to do is to use those sensor you need to power this power control pin as one or rather you need to provide a digital high signal to this pin and then you'll be able to read the census data that's that's the catch you can say okay you let me know why this ttgo team had did this particular thing into their architecture do you know the reason i know my team know but what about you do you know that do do let me know if you know the reason down in the comments if you don't know well i let you know the reasons maybe in instagram so it's a two follow me on instagram as well great Okay, so those lines of code were not only important for this video, it is about my upcoming project. So I'll let you know about that project in the end of the video. So stay tuned. So here you just need to mention the minimum and maximum soil moisture value. Now, how you can get this value? Well, you just need to use the sensor and you need to, you know, uh, dip the sensor inside a bowl of water and that will give you the maximum value and just remove the sensor just rub this uh, capacitive soil moisture sensor and whatever the value you get will be the soil minimum value so you need to diff you know uh, take out those values and mention those values here in my case it is 1638 for maximum and 13285 for the minimum value okay uh, and likewise you'll be able to map like whether the soil moisture is 0% or 100% Great. After that, the uh, uh, initializing this light sensor, initializing the DHT11 sensor, pretty common. And then, yes, what we did is we are just printing the data of all the sensors. Now, this was pretty common. The only catch here was the power control pin, and that's why I need to discuss you uh, about this thing in this video. Everything is pretty common. Now, one thing is this this particular thing is also a soil a salt sensor okay so whether this flower pot do require some salt or not like how we will be able to judge that well here i have provided some values or rather i got the values from the official uh ttgo library or ttgo github page and they said that if the value is less than 201 that means it needs some salt it needs some or, or you can say organic compound you can say okay if it is uh less than uh 251 it means it's it has some uh salt but it is in low amount okay 351 is the optimal uh, it is good good number and above 350 it's too high okay so accordingly you will be able to see whether this plant or your smart garden has enough amount of salt or not okay so this will uh, give you the salt advice and then temperature humidity and battery status pretty common because yeah all the things is pretty straightforward using the library and that's it about this particular code nothing much nothing major other than the power control pin now what i'll do is select the right board which is esp the Vruver module right com port and straight away hit the upload button and after the code gets uploaded let me show you how the data looks like in the serial monitor and in the meantime you can do one thing which is you can like this video if you're really interested in this particular sensor and want to try it out for your next project do click the like button also let me know in the comments about what will you be making after you get this kind of sensor in your hand and also let me tell you i'm planning to make a future video about 
the smart pod 2.0 okay so if you don't know what the smart pod is then here is the video of a smart pod which is about expressing the feelings of the plant whether the plant is feeling thirsty whether the planting plant is feeling cold hot every expression is like displayed onto the display and i'm thinking to make a better version advanced version a a very uh, like a different thing like updated version of this plant which will be smart pot 2.0 and i'm really excited to drop the video of it and maybe you are excited too so i'll soon drop the video of that and yeah in the meantime the code got already uploaded so i open the serial monitor and let's see the data here as you can see printing all the data of all the sensors i'll pause this as of now so lux value is 786 so light is very very good here because there is a ring light here there is a uh, dome light here okay then the soil moisture says seven this is something very strange uh seven percent okay is it seven percent only let me just dig it deep inside the soil and let me check the values again it should not be seven yeah it's 83 percent so it has an adequate uh, amount of soil moisture uh soil dead wise is needed it needs some salt so i'll, I'll take care of this particular thing temperature is 27 humidity is 40 percent battery voltage is five because i powered up with the usb cable so yeah of, of course it should be showing as five volt only okay that's it that is all the data that we are getting here and like if i turn off the light sensor if turn off the lights here probably the value will decrease uh let me just turn off the light yeah so now the light value is 0.83 so it's totally a uh, 1.6 and so it's totally dark here so yeah, everything is working pretty fine. Let me turn it on everything again. And so yeah, that was all about this TTGO high grow sensors. And I covered pretty much everything about this sensor from the specification to the demo firmware to the demo code, which I'll definitely provide you onto my GitHub repository, which link you can find in the description of this video. And yeah, that's it about this video. Do subscribe our channel if you want to see that smart point 2.0 video and also some other project videos in the field of electronics, IoT and automation. And yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one and explore, learn, share with me. Take care, SMS.